Do you know if jo Joanna Kale is online? No, she's not. She's not. Patrick Fleming is. He's a law Call the meeting to order. Uh, what's the first thing? Do we have to roll call again today? Yes, we do. Okay, please take roll call. Yes, sir. Senator Driscoll. Excused. Senator Furphy. Here. Senator Guru. Here. Senator Hicks. Here. Senator Steinmetz. Here. Representative Harshman. Here. Representative Knapp. Here. Representative Larson. Here. Representative Storr. Here. Representative Walters. Here. Vice Chair Nethercott. Here. Chairman Obermuller. Here. You have a quorum, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, committee. Another good day of learning. We should uh, have some great testimony today. Based on who I see in the audience today, we should be really good. So our first topic this morning, we'll just get right into it. State agency pools. Pool A, investment efficiency. Who do we have up on this one? Good morning. Would you... Uh, we all know you, but the public needs to. Could you introduce yourselves? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I'm Don Williams, Deputy State Treasurer. I'm um, joined this morning with Patrick Fleming, uh, our Chief Investment Officer. I have Katie Smith here, our Chief Financial Officer, as well as Caleb Simpson, our Deputy Investment Officer. Do we have Kate? And uh, actually, Patrick is going to start us off talking about um, the SAP. Yesterday, you might recall that when we were discussing um, the investment policy statement, there were four major changes that occurred um, to the investment policy statement this year in June. One of those things were changes to the way that the SAP, the state agency pool, was invested. And <laughs> that is where Patrick told you that he would speak to you about that today. I'm just kind of um, filling time here, waiting to see his little face. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Patrick, take it away. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, my name is Patrick Fleming. I'm Chief Investment Officer for the State Treasurer's Office. Um, today, I wanted to follow up with our conversation from yesterday, looking at the returns um, that we were having in the state agency pool and what we were trying to do is get a better return than what we've had in the past. And so one of the things that we set out to do is saying, um, we, we are not able to take a, a loss on these funds, but what could we do to potentially get a, a better return? And we're talking about um, approximately $5.7 billion. So um, every single basis point there is $570,000. So it is a significant amount of money that we're leaving on the table if we do not maximize the return. So um, what we did is we said, all right, well, if we can take uh, a percentage of the funds and invest them in uh, investment grade securities and higher um, yielding assets, we'd be able to improve that return. So Karen, if you would be um, able to change to that SAP default rate for bonds table that is in the uh, presentation. As Karen is pulling up the presentation, I'm gonna um, just comment what we're trying to do is take 20% of the funds and look at non-US treasury investments. And so with that, um, we wanna make sure that we have the lowest default rate possible. So with that, what we're looking at is only investing in securities that have a default rate of 0.1% or lower. And so as you can see from the table, if you look at AAA securities in year one, it has a zero default rate all the way out to three years. So those securities would be eligible. And what this would be a AAA security would be a sovereign and supranational, like a foreign uh, a country like Sweden or supranational uh, like uh, World Bank, uh, European Investment Bank securities, uh, uh, issuers like that. And then on the corporate side, if you go down on the left-hand scale in the one-year sector, you can see you can go all the way down to a single-A security and still only have a 0.1% default ratio. 
So these are the securities that we'd be looking to purchase up to 20% of the fund. The other area that we want to be able to invest in would be agencies of the U.S. Treasury, for instance, like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, um, those type of securities. So with this, we feel that we can add an additional five to 10 basis points in additional yield by investing in these securities. And this is what was approved um, in the investment policy statement. Um, so that is uh, what we're working on for the SAP. And I'll stand for questions before we uh, I pass it over to Caleb to discuss Pool A. Uh, committee, any questions? Seeing none, uh, Caleb? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to I'm oh, going to jump over Kayla real quick, okay. um, just to talk a little bit about that state agency pool and um, just the background. As you know, this was supposed to be an informational meeting, right? So I'm yes. not exactly sure how how familiar you are all with the state agency pool, but it is the it is the state's checking account basically. It's the combination of all of the in the agency funds that they spend their money out of, where they're other than general funds. So all of the special revenue accounts. Um, we have several water funds in the state agency pool. We have several reserve accounts. And this, and this was what prompted the concern and interest by the legislature and the, and the body to, to encourage us to pursue other and more lucrative methods of investing. Traditionally, because it's our checking account, what we kind of call is our checking account, we have resisted um, um, riskier um, investments because th there's the, the immediate needs on those, uh, on those funds um, um, exist. And so th this is a way that what Patrick described is a way of being able to invest those funds with a little bit more um, um, uh, return while still protecting the liquidity of those funds. Uh, Don, um, uh, uh, remind us how much is in Pool A, how many dollars? Um, in, well, for the state agency pool in Pool A. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Caleb tells me SAP is 4.6 billion, and and the state aid, or the pool A is um, 390 million market rates. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Got a good team here. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Um, so one of the other things we wanted to talk to you about that was on the agenda is um, kind of hearkening back to that total return strategy. Um, this is all part of that um, modification and massaging of our investment policy to, to you maximize returns as we're always looking to do. So with Pool A, we um, had looked at, as you might, you know, if, if you're familiar, we've been talking about this total return strategy now for about a year. And we had talked about whether or not we needed to or would like to modify how the Pool A was invested, who the participants were. Um, there's quite a range of balances uh, in those participants. We go from the Wildlife Natural Resource Trust Fund of 200 million to the Emergency um, Volunteer uh, volunteer Services Trust of 300,000. Uh, it's there's a range there and and so at one time so we in in the in the um, implementation or the dis decision making process of of the TRR strategy we invited our pool A participants to come and we had thought about, you know, modifying who the membership was making recommendations. As we, as we did our exploratory meetings and thinking, we determined that we don't recommend that we want to change pool A at all. Um, we wanted, we, we caused quite a bit of angst with our participants when we suggested maybe, you know, for lack of a better term, kicking some of them out for having too small a balances that, that caused a great deal of concern. And so what we um, determined was that we would just sort of grandfather the folks that were in Pool A, this is our recommendation, that we would grandfather the folks that are in Pool A and then recommend to you going forward that should the legislature deem a, a fund or a trust account um, eligible to be invested in Pool A, that it would need to have a minimum balance of $5 million. And that's the part that I wanted to lead in to let um, Caleb talk to. But I, before I do that real quick, Caleb, I just want to reiterate that we are not recommending that we change any of the current Pool A participants. I think that we'll talk later about you all wanting to move some folks out of Pool A, like the Wildlife Natural Trust, do some different things. But we would not, um, we would not recommend, and I want to say that separately, we don't, we don't have a, an opinion about that one way or the other if you move them out but for if you didn't do that if you made no changes we wouldn't recommend any changes does that make sense so okay, uh, senator grew thank you 
Good morning, Don. Good morning. Um, I'm trying to get a handle on this because then we, I thought we went through this a bit about what the needs were, and now what I'm and so let me see if I go about this the right way. So now the number that you just said five million five million dollars. How close is that to the numbers that we were talking about last year? Is the what we need in the accounts to cover? I mean, it was is there a big gap in that or? I mean, I thought we had this down, and now I'm hearing that the, some of the departments were nervous. And I thought, I thought we went through that to make sure that we had enough to cover them for their their incidental needs. So I just want to see, you know, how big of a cushion are we are we building in here, and are we being a little, you know? Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Grew, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. Okay, maybe. Okay. What um, I or, or maybe I just misunderstand the question. Um, oh, it's okay. I, so I'm probably wrong. In Pool A, you know, it's kind of like the savings account. Right. And, and then That's each of those saying. accounts have a, an expenditure account within the state agency pool. Mm -hmm. um, the earnings from those accounts in Pool A are generally deposited to their income account in the state agency pool. So if we were to um, I'll reject an account from Pool A, if we said, nope, you can't participate, you have to go sit in SAP. There, that account's ability to earn a little bit extra money with an associated additional risk is diminished then for their ability to be expend, able to expend those funds. Does that help? Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And is this an all right time to segue then to Caleb? Sure. Thank you, Caleb. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Caleb Simpson, Deputy Chief Investment Officer uh, for, the, for the State Treasurer's Office. Um, on the, on the back of Deputy Williams' comments, you know, after a lot of careful consideration and, and discussion internally, and just looking at the general portfolio characteristics of Pool A, <clears throat> what makes it unique and distinguishes it from the SAP really effectively as a committee, how you should view it is you know, a checking versus savings account, which Pool A is these agencies' savings account. The nature of that being given the risk profile of the assets that we are investing on behalf of all of these participants. Approximately 26% of the pool is invested in what we consider illiquid, illiquid assets, right? So real estate, infrastructure, et cetera, assets in which liquidity is not readily available. So in determining the $5 million minimum account balance, we felt it was prudent that agencies have significant liquidity and a, a sufficient liquidity profile before they invest in Pool A to ensure uh, in, in the case of income needs, um, they were very aware that you know, a, a large share of pool A is illiquid uh, and we are unable to redeem on, on a, over a short period. So really those, those were the thoughts uh, that really went into this recommendation of, of $5 million. And I'll, I'll yield to any questions. Any questions? Yeah, Mr. Committee. Chairman, so we, we, we did this a couple of years ago and I see uh, our, our game and fish departments here. And, and part of the discussion then was is, is these are going to go into semi uh, illiquid assets for the purpose of getting that higher return in pool A. Um, <clears throat> and what is the time horizon on those? Because I know that was a discussion we had two years ago. In other words, somebody can't put it into their quote savings account and then withdraw it a month later based on the investment strategy. So do you have a recommendation on time horizon when you're visiting with the agencies to say, look, don't put it in here one month and take it out the next? We have a guidelines not only for the minimum amount of money, the five million now, but but what is the current recommendation or the practice to say what is the duration that you need to leave it in pool A in order to, to allow the investment folks to go ahead and chase those higher returns, or do we have a, a policy on that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Hicks. I'll defer to uh, Mr. Fleming. Um, I have some thoughts regarding kind of the liqu liquidity profile and, and what you should consider to be kind of your, your expected time horizon, but I'll, I'll let Patrick opine first. Um, thank you, Caleb. Mr. Chairman, Senator, the, my understanding is in the statute that we have the distribution for cash needs, but as far as the ability for these institutions to pull cash out, um, they would need to, to go through um, legislative process and I, I will uh, defer to Don on that to double check but is that is that correct that they do not have the ability just to withdraw the funds other than from their cash needs thank you mr. chairman uh, senator so these 
ideally these funds, they're, they are identified as um, statutory trust accounts. So you would not be pulling your money out. Now, Game and Fish is a whole different um, situation because they decided they had such a large balance in the SAP in their operating account that they wanted to, to move some funds over. Now, when we visited with them about that, um, the, you know, we would need, uh, I, I would assume, like Pat, uh, Caleb will weigh in, but we've talked about like a three month notice, depending on how much that you want out of that account. But ideally, we would not be anticipating that anyone's taking their money out of Pool A just because of that, the statutory trust um, uh, requirements that are associated with those funds. And, and Mr. Chairman, Senator Hicks, as far as the timing of this, this is what is called the liquid portion of the total rate of return. And so the assets that will be going in here are very liquid, very easy to get in and out of. So any fund that is put into pool A, we can in, in effect that change um, immediately within uh, three to six months. So it would be very easy to get in. Follow up? No. Anyone else on the committee? <clears throat> So, um, yeah, maybe Mr. Chairman, so just, just for my edification, so when we look at the state agency pool and then the investments in pool A, getting back to the checking and the savings account type of analogy and stuff, um, do we have guidelines so for the agencies to make a determination whether they want to put it into pool A or not? In other words, what's your cash flow needs? What's the balance in your state agency account? What's the opportunity to maybe move some of that into pool yeah, A or not? Or do we just leave that at the discretion uh, of the agencies? Or is there a communication with the treasurer's office to say, you know, here's our overall portfolio. You know, what's the best recommendation? Do those discussions happen with the state agencies? Mr. Chairman. Senator Hicks, yes, they do. To be um, a, to be considered even for deposit into the in pool A, it, that has to be a statutory change. You you all have to pass legislation for that to happen. So there are many conversations that are occurring prior to that event. Um, the if an agency is interested, they're reaching out to us. They're talking to us about that. Or a legislator. Sometimes um, there they have been um, legislative initiatives that. A legislator has decided that, that this should be a, an account in pool A. So at that point, then the agency gets involved and we start talking with them and and with you. And we appear, you know, when that bill is, is created, we talk to LSO. Um, we speak with you during um, committee hearings. So it's, it's pretty well vetted by the time that we um, appear before you and that you pass that bill. Mr. Chairman. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Yes, and I just wanted to address, um, in addition to Don's comments, that the five million threshold is just not, you know, something that we just randomly looked at. But to get a, a well diversified portfolio that you could actually implement into these various asset classes, you need you need approximately five million dollars to be able to do it. So we have funds that are less than that that were grandfathered in, that are proving to be difficult to move things around. Um, and so that is the reason why that we have that $5 million threshold for these funds to be able to be uh, eligible into that. And, and also a, a follow up to Senator Drew's comments, as far as the, the cash um, uh, available, what um, Don and Katie have done is they went back and looked at all of the various agencies and their cash needs to be able to see what do they need throughout the year. And so with the work that those two individuals did, um, we determined we had to have a certain amount of cash available to support those state agency funds. And so with the, the you know, 5.7 billion that we have invested in that, in that fund, um, we have a significant portion of it, not significant, but it's um, approximately four to 500 a million uh, available to, uh, to meet the cash needs of these, of, of these various accounts if something happened where they needed the funds on a, on, on a short-term notice. And all of these, as you know from the investment uh, schematic that we have, are invested in short-term securities four years and under. Um, we have the ability to, uh, to uh, go into those funds and hit them, uh, take funds out if there's, a, if there's a dramatic cash need, which has not been the case over the, uh, the past uh, number of years. Mr. So, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. So to follow up back with the recommendation, <clears throat> is that something that you can effectuate through just policy in the treasurer's office? It doesn't take a statutory change to say that <clears throat> you can't move funds in there unless it's five million. So you've made a recommendation. Do we have the 
do you guys have the rulemaking authority or the policy making authority to effectuate that or do we need a statutory guideline mr chairman uh senator hicks I'm glad you asked that because what I wanted to say was we we do are a part of the collaboration and we suggest a five dollar a five million dollar minimum. But as you can see, there are several funds in Pool A that have less than a five million dollar balance. So we have been um, not as influential to the legislative body as we hope to be. So I would say that would be a great thing to put in statute for us because while we make those recommendations, they're not always heeded. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see who was oh, we have to okay. Senator Grew. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, in answer, Don, we try. <laughs> we try our best. And, Pat, and Patrick, to you, thank you for and I'm sorry I worded it poorly, but that's yeah, that's what I was getting at, not the investment side of the saving side, because I figured it each year we can go through appropriations and then each department will know outside of game and fish the ones that are not in our purview but the ones that are they'll know their cash needs based on what we approved in addition to that then other other agencies that are not whether it's y dot or game and fish they'll they'll have their own boards be you know knowing what their what their cash needs are for the year so make sure they're whole and then to try we know we want to try to get to that five million on your side to from the investment side i was just making sure that the treasurer's office had a hand in just and seeing what those cash needs are because like I say I know it's the gut reaction would be to err on the side of being conservative about how much money was available for them to spend because they want to make sure they're not short what we're trying to do is make sure we get to to what the, the treasurer needs for that five million dollar goal to invest that we are mindful of even though we don't always make it thank you Mr Chairman thank I Mr. apologize Chairman. I didn't understand Senator <laughs> Senator Furphy, did you have a? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a very basic question. Um, looking at your chart, the bonds that would qualify what you're talking about, give me an example of what those are. Are those corporate bonds or agency bonds? Uh, what are we looking at there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Furphy. Um, uh, bonds that would be eligible would be, for instance, uh, U.S. investment grade corporate bonds uh, based upon those guidelines. Um, if they are rated, uh, if, you know, let, let's say they have a duration of one year or less, they would have to have a single A or double A rating. Um, in addition, you also have some supranational um, as well as uh, government related uh, entities. So there's a number of uh, U.S. Uh, aid uh, agencies uh, that are, are backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Um, in addition, you could also have uh, FHLB or any of the, the GSEs, so Fannie, Fre uh, Freddie, et cetera, as long as they, they fall within the maturity and credit quality guidelines. Well, Mr. Chairman, Don, uh, do we know how many accounts that are in Pool A, how many different entities have? Counts that have less than five million. Mr. Chairman, Senator Hicks, um, the chart that was provided was provided by LSO. I don't have the exact balances, but I can get those for you and email you exactly who has a below the five million dollar uh, threshold. For sure, um, I know the emergency medical services uh, trust account definitely does. Um, it's within the hundreds of thousands. That one's extremely low. Um, and then just off looking at this um, list, um, the FPA account is a newly added account. It's not on your chart because this was as of fiscal year 22, I believe, but it was just recently added in fiscal year 23. It is definitely below that threshold as well. Would uh, if uh, if we move forward with a draft, would it be your intention to grandfather the ones that are in there in, or would you, or are you thinking of dropping ones that are less than five million? Mr. Chairman, no, we would we would totally accept them getting grandfathered in and moving forward. If that was the pleasure of the the legislature, that was totally fine. But just moving forward, we would we would strongly encourage that a $5 million balance um, would be needed before they participate in the pool. 
And, and Mr. Chairman, uh, back in the napkin, approximately eight accounts are under the five million dollars uh, under oh, the Mary? five million dollar threshold. I didn't hear that, Katie. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hicks, approximately eight. Eight. Yes. Do we, do we have the total amount in those eight accounts? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Hicks, we can follow up with the total amount. So, real quick question, just to yeah. follow up on that, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, yeah, Senator. Okay. So, what's the what's the current differential rate of return between the agency pool and pool A? That I know Patrick had mentioned it earlier. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Hicks, give me one second to look at the, the prior year's returns. I have it, Caleb, if you. Oh, yes, Patrick, if, if you have it available. The one-year return for pool A is 1.7, three-year return is 4.6, and a five-year at 4.2. State agency pool, one-year return 1.9, three-year return minus 0.1%, and five years of 1.6. Now, one thing is just on the look back, thinking about where rates were for the last five years with the zero interest rate policy that the Federal Reserve was running, rates were at zero. Stop. Now, the short-term rates are above 5%. So on an ongoing basis, assuming that rates stay um, higher than what we've seen in the past, the state agency pool will have um, a much higher rate of return going forward than what we've seen in the past uh, five to eight years. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, and yeah. the reason I was trying to get some numbers there is just make a determination if we're going to set a threshold.